I have led a very interesting uh, career uh, starting off uh, in college. Uh, I was uh, in the Peace Corps program called Amigosas Americas, uh, where I vaccinated thousands of children in Guatemala. Uh, and then I uh, spent some time following that as, a, as an Army officer. Um, and I went back to school. Um, I have degrees in uh, microbiology and chemistry and a master's in aeronautical engineering. I started a PhD program in engineering management. Uh, I'm a professor of engineering management at Henry Riddle. I've been teaching for over 30 years. Um, I find teaching to be a stimulating way for me to give things back and also keep me on top of the, the technology areas. Um, I have worked for the leading companies in atomic and molecular spectroscopy, um, and so I have a very strong technical background, applications driven, providing support to major organizations, government, research institutes like Princeton and, and such, um, solving difficult analytical problems. Uh, from then, I also worked on a lot of R&D programs um, where we were looking at uh, different types of sensors for chem bio uh, defense. And then most recently, I was a director of engineering at Sanford Research Institute's Marine Space Technology Group, where we developed electromagnetic sensing systems and other types of things that um, all of a sudden, at the end of everything, all these different uh, diverse things are all gelled to give me the capability to do what I'm doing today, including a startup I did many years ago where I took a company from seed to public. So I'm very familiar with raising funding um, and going from zero to something in a quick uh, period of time with minimal amount of funding. I think uh, it's not giving up and also um, having a child's enthusiasm towards um, learning and growing and um, thinking outside the box and acting on those things and not listening to um, people that tell you it's impossible, um, but figure out, always have the attitude of how do I do something, not why I can't do something. Um, obviously, the first thing that's the most important thing, even as a military officer, is to take care of the troops. So uh, I took whatever steps necessary to take those people in my organization at the highest risk and minimize their uh, need to be um, out and about. Um, a lot of the people working with me do not need to be uh, in the office. So, I mean, so first of all, take care of your people. And then... Um, Look at what's happening and look at it as an opportunity. In our case, the system that we've developed can be used for other things. In this case, we can actually measure uh, viral um, infections in, in human beings. Um, it's been well established for things like mad cow disease, um, HIV, um, SARS, and a couple other things. Uh, research done by academic institutions that demonstrate that the technology that we're using for blood glucose analysis actually um, can be used uh, in that regard. So we're going after some R&D programs uh, to help fund the company's further development and develop another application for our device. We have been working remotely for quite some time because we have people that are working out of their homes part-time. Being a startup, we can't always afford to pay people uh, large salaries and so we have a lot of people that have other jobs and and work part-time for us uh, you know in different parts of the country so um, this is just another level of that it's kind of actually helped us because I had to do a lot of traveling before uh, to do uh, pitches to raise money and now I can everything's done virtually which saves me money and time I don't have to tra tra to travel as much and, and so it worked out good I think it's devastating for lots of businesses like restaurants and uh, movie houses and uh, that are based on having large groups of people partake in uh, various activities. Uh, uh, and uh, I feel uh, blessed that we're not in that situation with the business we have. I would say the most difficult time I had 
uh, was um, doing a startup, his startup allergy, uh, because um, medical devices are very difficult to find funding for, especially in Florida. And so um, what I did was I, I came up with a strategy where I went after uh, funding sources throughout the uh, United States, specifically California and New York, and I was able to get enough traction to uh, to get the company funded and launched and, uh, and, and continue to do so uh, with uh, with good success. But it's not been easy. There have been many times where um, we're down to the last twenty dollars in the bank account, uh, wondering how we're going to pay everybody next week. And, that, uh, it's been a roller coaster, but uh, it's well worth it for what the outcome is going to be, something that will really help people in the world. I think the most important thing is that you take care of your people. That's number one. So take care of your people. The next most important thing is examine your business model and determine how you could turn it into more of a virtual business and um, experiment with different ideas. Be thinking out of the box. Be creative. Don't be afraid to try things. Start things and try them. Don't think about things. Don't let yourself be a victim of analysis, paralysis by analysis. I think in the business that I'm in, which is saving lives of diabetics, improving their life. Most of my employees have someone that they know in their family or themselves are diabetic. And so there's a lot of motivation just in that fact. The other part of the motivation is that they are doing something to benefit mankind. And the larger picture is one that this is a significant uh, endeavor and also uh, obviously it can be monetarily rewarding. Uh, for those people. As far as the public is concerned, I think uh, they're motivated by um, good things uh, for, for helping people and such as well.